et non pas un voyage dans lequel on va découvrir un nouveau territoire. Je suis plutôt un explorateur qui est dans l'introspection. Arriver à trouver son pic de forme le moment voulu au niveau du championnat, c'est ça qui n'est pas évident. Lorsque l'on s'arrête de respirer, on rompt une chaîne qui, en fait, s'égrène tout au long de la vie. Clapney représente cette espèce de quête du contrôle du souffle. Une fois que ces premiers mètres sont franchis, la gravité commence à s'installer et je commence à couler un petit peu plus naturellement. Les secondes et les mètres s'égrènent, le temps passe, et on arrive vraiment dans un état, non pas second, mais un peu un état au ralenti. Je peux regarder autour de moi, je ne vois rien. Euh, je suis vraiment en fait sur un, un voyage intérieur, une introspection. Seul avec soi-même. Donc je remonte, c'est l'instant le plus difficile, on va dire, de la, de la plongée, parce que je commence à avoir envie de respirer. Le rapport que j'entretiens avec Tudor est très fort aujourd'hui pour pouvoir mettre en lumière euh, sa formidable histoire avec le, avec le monde sous-marin. Maîtriser son souffle, c'est euh, prendre le contrôle dans ce processus archaïque. C'est un voyage en fait pour euh, découvrir au final un petit peu qui l'on est. As restrictions change, remember facts to protect yourself and others. 
face coverings must be worn on public transport, in shops, in certain indoor public places, and should be worn where distancing is difficult. Avoid crowded places, clean your hands and surfaces regularly, keep a two meter distance from others, and self-isolate and book a test if you have symptoms. Remember facts. It's been a long year 
for a safer Scotland. Everything about being a human in the 21st century is impacted by knowledge about rising sea levels because fundamentally it changes where we can live and how we can live. My work focuses on working out why glasses and ice sheets are getting darker as the climate warms and how that's going to contribute to sea level rise. I can remember when I was trying to choose the subject I wanted to study at university and I was well on course for one particular area of study and uh, it was a conversation with my mum actually and she said, are you doing this for the right reasons? Is it what you love? Then I rethought my decision. Really what drives me is solving problems that haven't been solved before and there's an unlimited amount of those in the Arctic and Antarctic. That was my absolute obsession. One of the privileges of working in this field is that there are major questions that simply have not been answered. So we're making big progress even by doing fundamental baseline studies. There are large areas of the Arctic and the Antarctic that are colorful and dark, and dark things heat up in the sun. So those dark areas melt faster. If we can use drones, planes, and satellites to see what processes are causing the darkening, then we can start to build a model that can project that darkening into the future. When we have that knowledge, we can start to think about how to mitigate or how to reduce that risk. Following on from the award, we now have the tools and the equipment to be able to scale up over the entire planet. We've got new explanations for how microscopically small life darkens glasses and ice sheets at the scale of entire continents. Now, we have a much better foundation for more accurate models for how things are going to change into the future and the risks posed globally.
There's lots of people whose work has been a critical foundation for the work that I do. These incredible people that have gone the extra mile, striven for excellence, and it makes me want to live up to that ideal. There's no way that I would be able to do the science that I do without all of that, because that's decades of work. So all of the software that I write, all of the data that I produce is all completely openly available to the public. And I hope that in the future, people will use it to advance science a little bit further. And what's really satisfying for me is that people are already starting to do that. Scientific exploration of the poles is never going to be finished. There's no finish line. The whole point is to find the limit and go a little bit past it and make things a little bit more robust, more precise, or a little bit more accurate so we can make better decisions. We can always strive for perfection. As restrictions change, remember facts to protect yourself and others. Face coverings must be worn on public transport, in shops, in certain indoor public places, and should be worn where distancing is difficult. Avoid crowded places, clean your hands and surfaces regularly, keep a two metre distance from others, and self-isolate and book a test if you have symptoms. Remember facts.
strong. We haven't had the time to test it properly. Just be careful. This is going to go brilliantly. James Bond. Let's face it. It's made you redundant. Not as long as there are people like you in the world. You a double O? Two years. I thought you two would get along. NHS Scotland's Test and Protect will help to stop the spread of coronavirus. If you have a cough, fever, or loss or change in taste or smell, you need to request a test online right away, or call if you can't get online. If symptoms worsen or last for more than seven days, call 111. Please do not leave your home except to take the test to help protect others and save lives. Let's all keep doing our bit to beat coronavirus.